So again, the main important thing we want to learn from this is graphing in slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. Put your equation in that format. Plot the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is at positive 1. I put a nice little dot. My slope, rise over run, 1 over 2. So I go up 1 over 2. Now, um, I am graphing this function for all x. There is no restrictions on this graph. Would everybody agree with me? So I can just kind of do what I saw some of you doing. Take a nice little ruler and say that graph extends indefinitely to the left and indefinitely to the right. Right? Now, I go over here, and I need to graph y equals negative 2x um, minus 2. Now, some of you might have had an issue with, have an issue with this if it's not in slope-intercept form. So I'd recommend rewriting it as negative 2x plus 2. Now, you guys can see that this graph goes up to as my y-intercept and goes down to to the right 1. And again, this is for all x, so there's no restrictions. However, now when we look into graphing the piecewise function, what the piecewise function does, yes? I said I changed the answer when we were talking about this. We corrected this. So when you look at this, now what we're doing, the only difference with the piecewise functions is one, we're putting both these graphs on the same set of axes. But two, instead of for all x, now what we're doing is I am restricting this from negative 4, which is less than x, which is less than or equal to 2. So I now have my graph from here. You guys agree with me that's 2, right? And then from 2 to um, negative 4. Well, let's continue this pattern. So at negative 1, that's at negative 2, and negative 3, negative 4. Because down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. But that's an open circle, right? Because it's x is less than. So the rest of the graph now gets eliminated. Does everybody see that? Now let's do the other one. The other one says graph when x is greater than 2. So if I'm going down one or down 2 over 1, and then I have to go down 2 over 1 again. But it's x is greater than, so that means that's a open circle. Well, what is that point? Over 2, down 2. So I go over 2, down 2. So my graph looks like that. I have two boundaries for this function. Sometimes I like to just keep that graph there, but just kind of show it as like that's originally what the graph used to look like. But then from this graph, I'm only graphing it. Maybe I'll do this. So you guys see how I graph the lines, but now I'm only taking the red? Because what the red is, the red is the restriction on the domain. Yes? So the x is greater than 2, how can you think of it as the, the open circle? You're not. X, so yeah, so OK, right. Because remember, its x values are greater than 2. So think about it. If here's 2, x values greater than 2 go to the right. right? So it's not, the, it's not the f of x values, it's the x values. Does that make sense? OK, now, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. I asked you guys to identify the domain. The domain is how far left and how far right the graph is going. How far left is this graph going? Negative 4, and is that, is that point included or not? 
And then we could say, well, how far? Let's see. Oh, there's a discontinuity here. Remember we talked about discontinuities, holes, or asymptotes? We'll talk more about these later, but this is a jump discontinuity. You can see as you're going from one to the next, you guys can see this is not a continuous function. This is what we call a jump, because you got to jump from one function to the next. Huh? Well, let's think about it. So from negative 4 all the way over to 2, is 2 a value in this graph function? Yep. So therefore, and then on past 2, we go, it continues on, right? So the domain is basically from negative 4 to infinity. But for the range, how low does this graph go? So how low is this graph going? Negative, negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. So we have negative infinity to negative 2. But then we have to jump again, because this is actually at negative 1, right? Yes? Why would we make the domain unique? There is no unique. Because we jump between 1 You're right. So um, f of 2 is in the top equation, right? f of 2.000001 is in the bottom function, right? It's content like any number greater than 2 is down here. This function is just not true for 2, but it's okay cuz that function is true for 2, right? So our domain is actually covered for all values greater than -4. Okay, does you kind of see how that works? Um, and again, this could be even smaller, like 0, 0, 0, 0, you know. But the range, we have an issue. Because the range, we go from negative infinity to negative 2. Then there's nothing between negative 2 and negative 1, right? There's nothing between negative 2 and negative 1. Then we start back at negative 1, and we go as high as, what was this value? 2. And we prefer to union them. But even if worse comes to worse and you don't union them, it's still understood. OK? Yes? Would the T be uh, one of the brackets? Thank you. Good call. <laughs> yes? No, the whole affects the domain. Negative 4 is not in the domain because it's at a hole. So it's open circle. If this was closed, this would be a bracket. So yeah, the hole does affect the domain. It's open. It's not in the domain. Oops, sorry. 